Hey, Cameron here again with my uh, Raspberry Pi Zero W little uh, Tesla Model 3 uh, dash cam script and utility. So basically what I'm doing is allowing uh, the USB gadget module on the Raspberry uh, Pi Zero allow it the Tesla to see this device as a storage device and that lets uh, it use the dash cam that you can see up there and also for USB music it is available as well on the on the computer there so you got the USB and um, so the cool thing is from the web browser you can control some things so let's go ahead and look it says here it gives us a little bit of a status window drives mounted to Tesla yes drives mounted to Raspberry Pi no Network shares mounted? No. So I still have the button that does everything for you, just syncs everything all at once with one click of a button. But I've made some upgrades to what you can actually do. The biggest being that we all know that the Tesla cam can go uh, corrupt. Um, I haven't seen that on the Raspberry Pi yet. It's it's worked really well, but in the event that uh, the file system goes corrupt, um, and, and it well, I've seen it, I haven't seen this turn to the little... X that we see a lot of times when it just can't access it but the file system does go corrupt as the car turns off and on and especially if you're using this script and you're uh, basically force dismounting the um, the drives to copy things over so that's a great utility to have to repair um, any file system issues that you might have so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unmount the drives from the Tesla and that will actually kill the dash cam icon in the music. And um, this will do it all at once if I use the automatic sync. But uh, it now has status windows. So it says now dismantling drives and making them accessible. And if we refresh the current status, it will tell us drives mounted to Tesla, no. Drives mounted to Raspberry Pi, yes. Um, let's go ahead and mount our network share. I don't have a, the network share mounted, so I'll go ahead and mount that. So it says mounting network share, share mounted. And then I'll refresh this. Network shares mounted, yes. So now if I want to uh, copy all my Tesla cam files to the network share, I just click this button. And this takes a second. Um, it won't give status on until it updates the first file. Uh, Tesla's browser has a little bit of a uh, buffer issue that I've been able to mitigate but it is slower than what you'd expect on a normal browser so after it gets through that first file it will actually start giving a status on the files that are being copied there you go there's that there's that first file and it actually tells us the speed that it's copying at and um, once it's done it will say finish so as it, as it gets through each file it gives a status update but this is really neat because you're not just sitting there wondering, is it working or or what? Um, you can actually see what's happening. So there we've got uh, it going down the page there. Although I did not realize that it doesn't seem to be capable of scrolling. So that's something I'm going to have to to fix. But you can see the files copying and it will tell you um, when it's done. I'm, I'm going to let that copy, but you can actually, while that's working in the background, I'm going to click list Tesla cam files. And this gives me a readout of all the files that are on the drive. So the nice thing about that is it tells you uh, the exact time that the files uh, were are written. So you can see that there was some you know at 10 30 10 34 10 35 the most recent ones at 11 15 when we were just playing with it uh, so that's kind of neat you can see you can see which files and timestamps you're copying right from here so um, let's try this copy again and make sure that it is indeed finished okay so file transfer is complete so all of our 
dash cam files are sent over to the server and it will only overwrite new ones so if you've already saved a bunch uh, it will just it won't send those again it just uses rsync to do that so let's try out the repair fat32 utility I'm gonna go ahead and press that and once again okay so it unmounts the drive from the Raspberry Pi it runs the repair utility FS CK it it saw that it was uh, proper not properly unmounted and some data could be corrupt removes the dirty bit uh, repairs the drive basically because when we mount the unmount the drives from the Tesla we're basically just ripping that that uh, mount point away from it so there could be corrupt files so you can repair those right from here if that's ever an issue and um, once you're done doing what you need to do you can go ahead and mount the drives back to the Tesla. Tesla cam is mounted, unmounting, initiating drives for use by Tesla. And the dash cam icon is back up and we are set. So um, anyways, I will make a new package available of the scripts I'm using. Um, Oh, the other major thing that people were asking about is, well, how do you how do you do this? Well, I'm just doing it at home over my Wi-Fi. You could do this on the road. Um, I'm accessing the Raspberry Pi through a website. Uh, this website can be has to be external. It has to be an internet website. The Tesla browser will not go locally directly to the IP address on your home network. So you'll want to secure. Uh, your dynamic DNS. I'm showing that right now, but I will change the port later and I'll lock it down to only be accessible uh, to local devices. That's how I'm using it. You can use a hotspot. If you configure the hotspot with port forwarding to the Raspberry Pi um, and then navigate to the Raspberry Pi that's on the hotspot, uh, the same, you know, it doesn't matter if the Tesla is connected to the hotspot or not, but if you have a hotspot with your with your uh, Raspberry Pi that you leave in the car, you can do it on the go. That's not a problem. It'll be slower. Um, your network share, you'll have to mount differently, but the, all the scripts should still work as, as long as you mount it the right way. So anyways, I'll, I'll put together a, in the description a package of scripts that you can use uh, to get this going. Still work in progress. I think it will be really cool for when we uh, look at the Tesla cam files, if we could get screenshots, um, thumbnails of the files themselves. And I think I think I might be able to figure, I can, I can do that. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, but this is pretty neat um, and I'm having fun playing with it. I also just wanted to mention one other thing. Um, you can actually, so, you don't have to sit in your car and use uh, the web browser here to transfer your files. There's actually a really cool way someone pointed out to me that if you go in your Tesla app on your phone and just turn the climate control on, that will stay on for four hours if you don't turn it off manually. But if you turn that on, it provides power to the USB ports. And it will your Raspberry Pi will boot right up. And you can actually do this from inside on your laptop and uh, run this interface um, and copy everything without having to be sitting in the car. So you can do that, turn your climate control on, uh, connect to the website, copy your files, you get output on what's happening. Uh, as soon as it's done, you turn your climate control off and the Raspberry Pi will turn off as well and you're good to go. So it's really cool. You don't have to pull uh, things in and out of your car to make it work. Um, it's, it's a really neat setup. So anyways, I uh, hope this was helpful. So anyways, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you like these projects and want to kind of help us out and see more cool things going on with Tesla and all kinds of other tech stuff. Uh, anyways, we'll see you later.